Hey there, in this video we're going to look at uh, determining information about a quadratic function, it's, you know, it's vertex, axis of symmetry, various things like that, uh, if you're given the equation. Let's do that now. Alright, so we're going to look at a few different quadratic functions whose equations are given in vertex form and use what we know about the parameters in that form, a, h, and k, to determine a bunch of that information just by kind of visualizing the graph. Not creating a really detailed graph, but uh, just something simple enough to get those pieces of information. So we're first going to look at these two values right here. We have that h is 7, and we have that k is 25, right there and there. And that tells us that the vertex is going to be over here. It's going to be 7 to the right, the fact that that's a 7. It's trans the entire graph's translated 7 to the right and 25 up. So if we're thinking about our graph, our vertex is up there. So we can say it's 7, 25. We can also look at the value of a, that leading uh, coefficient there. It's 3. Now the thing for what we're doing that's important is the fact that it is positive because that's going to tell us that the direction of opening is up. It opens up like a bowl that's right side up. Now once we have that, we can get a lot of our other information here. Our axis of symmetry is just a line that runs vertically through the vertex. The equation of that axis of symmetry is just x equals 7. Our max or min value, first of all, the fact that it opens up means it's going to have a minimum value. This is, this is the lowest it goes. The lowest value it ever hits is 25. So that minimum value, you say it has a minimum of 25. The domain of this, again, we're just visualizing the graph, but this would just keep opening. Up. It keeps getting taller, but it also keeps getting wider. Eventually, it's going to cover everything on the x-axis. It's going to cover all real values of x. So we're going to put all real numbers. If you think about the equation, if you look back over here, you can put any value for x in there. There are no restrictions at all on what you can put in for x. And that's why the graph covers the entire x-axis worth of values. If you like symbols, instead of writing that in words, you can use symbols for this. You can put a letter x because that's the variable we're talking about. You can use it symbol that looks like a half circle with a line. It sort of looks like an E, but it's not an E. It's a symbol that means is an element of, and you can use an R with two lines like that to say real numbers. So if you prefer, you can write this. I'm happy enough and I almost prefer words because then everybody knows what you're talking about. Now, if we're talking about the range, the range is the possible Y values. Our lowest y value is this, and then the graph goes up from there. So the, the values that get covered are all those ones down to 25, or in other words, from 25 and up. This one I'm going to say with symbols. I'm going to say y is greater than or equal to 25. I'm going to just, I go with the assumption here that we're talking about the real numbers, so I'm not also going to say that. If you wanted to, you could write it and say, you could say, y is in this set of real numbers such that y is greater than 25 if you really want to and you can put those curly brackets around it but i think this is uh, enough and we're going to assume that it's real numbers unless you tell someone otherwise you could also put this one in words but that's a lot of words to write that one so that one's simpler with symbols all right let's look at another one this second one here we're going to go through a little bit more quickly here. We have a is negative 5. So again, it's negative. means it is going to open down. We have that h here is negative 10. means that the entire graph has been shifted to the left 10 units. And our k value here is negative 17. So if we're trying to visualize the graph there, draw the axes like that, you have that the entire graph has been shifted to the left 
10 and down 17. So that's where that vertex is. Negative 10, negative 17. And then if it opens down, we have like this. We have our axis of symmetry that is going to pass right through that x coordinate of the vertex there, right? Because it's right there. It's always going to be that x coordinate of the vertex. x equals negative 10. This one, since you have the thing opening down, it's going to have a maximum value of negative 17. It has a maximum of negative 17. The domain again, for the same reasons as above, is all real numbers. There are no restrictions. And the range is, since this one has a maximum of negative 17, another way of saying that is all the y values have to be less than or equal to negative 17. All right, let's look at the third one here. All right, third one here, we have y is x squared minus 7. Now, you might not recognize that being in uh, vertex form because there's just x squared. You, you could write x minus 0 squared minus 7 if you want. And then you could put a 1 out in front if you wanted to see all the, the three things. But people like to write it more simply, so they just say x squared minus 7. But you have to recognize that h is 0 here. It hasn't been shifted side to side at all. And you have to recognize that that, that number is the k value, not the h value, because it's outside of our square there. And the fact that there's no number in front of that x squared means the a value is 1. And again, the important thing to realize is that is positive. So our parabola is going to be opening up. Our vertex is going to be 0, negative 7. If we're visualizing the graph, I'm going to leave this for a second and draw my graph of this one down below where I have some space there. All right, it hasn't been shifted side to side at all, but it has been shifted down, so our vertex is down here at negative 7 on the y-axis, and the thing opens up, something like this. All right, so it has a minimum value of negative 7. It has an axis of symmetry right down the middle there on the y-axis. So we say x equals 0. The domain, again, is all real numbers. And the range is the other way of saying this. y is greater than or equal to negative 7. All right. And uh, last one here. We'll get rid of that first. We're going to try and look at this one and analyze it a little bit. We have a is negative 1 fifth, or again, the fact that it's negative is the important thing here. This value inside there is the h value. h is 2. And there's no number in the end here. Again, it could say, if you wanted to make it a little more complicated, but see that the value is there. It could say plus 0 on the end, but nobody writes that. But you need to recognize that the k value is 0. and hasn't been shifted up and down at all. If we were trying to visualize the graph there, it's been shifted 2 to the right and not up and down at all. So that vertex is on the axis there. And the fact that this is negative means it's going to be opening down from there, like that. So vertex is 2, 0. Axis of symmetry, right down the middle there at 2. x equals 2. This one, since it opens down from 0, has a maximum of 0. The domain, again, same thing. And the range, the other way of saying this, is saying that all the y values have to be less than or equal to 0. All right, so that's it. That's looking at the vertex form of a quadratic function and determining some information about the graph.